In our last video, we could see how long it took uh, to kind of sketch out a sloped field by hand. Um, so I'm just going to show you how quickly we can do the same thing in MATLAB um, with the, uh, some relatively simple code in place. So remember, we had been working with dy dx was x minus y. So that's what you see here. Um, I won't get into why it's called dy string, uh, but this is the the function um, that the differential equation is set equal to. It's a function of both x and y. So it depends on where we are in the xy plane. If I run it, I can see uh, the slope field that we had meticulously uh, figured out by hand um, right here in this picture. Um, also, the, the computer is better at um, putting the slopes in when they're steep and being able to differentiate between them. So you can see our little uh, asymptote right in here um, where the slope lines are pointing to each other. We can kind of see a swirling pattern in here. Um, if we look at how um, this is lining up, so we can see you know, where different functions might flow through this slope field, or different solutions, I should say, could flow through this uh, slope field. So the slope field is actually a way to kind of see all possible solutions at the same time. And whatever the solutions are, they need to flow through this field. And we'll talk more about that um, in the next video. Um, so um, we can also, though, with the computer, have slope fields that are much better defined. So since we were doing it by hand, we only did it at integer points. Um, but it would be just as easy to add more points. The computer can do the calculations so quickly. So if I want the, the slope field to have increments of half units instead of one units, I can just change that one variable. And now we have a much um, clearer slope field. It's actually easier to see um, how things um, might flow, how solutions might flow within that slope field. Now, if we make those too small, um, it actually becomes harder to see what's happening. So if I go down to 0 0.1, um, that actually distorts what's going on. So using about 0.5 is the best. Um, the slope exists everywhere, um, but we're just looking at where it is every 0.5 units in both the x and y direction. Um, so right now, um, with going from x min to x max from negative 5 to 5, whoops, I changed those to 3s. Let me change those to 5s. In y min, let's make that 5, negative 5. So we can see it over a bigger region as well. And um, if we had to plot all of those points by hand, um, I think that's 121 points. I think that's 11. Oh, no, double that um, because uh, we had, uh, we're using half increments. So it's 21 by 21. Um, so over 400 little slopes to be plotted. MATLAB can do it in a matter of a, you know, a fraction of a second. So doing that by hand would be very, very onerous. Um, so we're going to be working with slope fields that are generated by MATLAB, and we want to know what to do with them, all right? So um, we, let me just show you a, one more right now. If I wanted to do the second slope field that we had, um, which was y divided by x, we have to, I could type that in, dot divided by, I have to use capital letters um, for this. There's that second slope field that we had. And you can see it's kind of like an explosion of slopes going outward from the origin. Um, it gets kind of interesting if I switch this around to be x over y instead. We might see that, whoops, not w, x over y. We'll see that we get a very different result when we do x over y rather than y over x. And you can see there's a, a distinct difference in that pattern of the slope field. And let me throw a negative in front. And let's see what happens when I throw a negative in front. So that's a very different slope field. Um, so we'll be able to look at solutions as they pass through slope fields. Um, but we'll generate those fields in MATLAB because it's um, so quick to do it and um, so tedious to do it by hand.